you guys asked for this a lot. So today I'm giving you my first impressions on the Boss GT1000 Core. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and today I'm gonna go over the Boss GT1000 Core, kind of play around, give you guys my first impressions. For those of you that are new to the channel, the way I like to go about doing gear reviews is I like to take something out and go into it blind and give you guys kind of my first impressions and mess around with it. And that way you guys get a really honest representation of what I'm going through when I'm dialing it in. Am I enjoying it? Am I having a hard time? I think it's just a little bit more telling to go into these things blind. Now, with that being said, I do want to disclaim two things. Number one, I bought this. Boss didn't send it to me. I have no biases here. And number two, I'm not going into this completely blind. Uh, I did know that the UI was a little bit different from the other things I've used, both from using the OD200, which is back here on the wall, over there. See it? It's the orange petal. Not only that, but one of my patrons has one. Shout out to Apoplexia. And, uh, you know, I trust his opinion, and he said that it was a little weird to dial in compared to your traditional modelers. One thing I'm really surprised with with the GT1000 core, especially with it being a $700 retail item, is there's no power switch. That might seem like a small nitpicky sort of thing, but when you're paying this much for a piece of hardware, kind of expect it to have a power switch. Just saying. Here's a patch that I built with a Bogner Ubershaw amp. The way that I have this set up to transmit these tones to your earbuds is I am actually using the GT1000 in front of my Seymour Duncan Power Stage 700 down here. That is powering this Mesa 4x12 cabinet. I'm not using the speaker emulation inside the GT1000. It does allow you to load up your own impulse responses. There's definitely a reason that I'm using it this way. I wanna go over that more in the formal review though, but let's check out some of these amps that it has and maybe some of the effects as well and we can dial in some tones here. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna hit the effect button and that's gonna open up the effect tank. And right away, the first thing I'm gonna say here is normally when I'm making a video like this and I have a modeler out and I'm dialing it in from the side here, I don't have any problems seeing the screen, but I do with this one. Like the viewing angle is pretty shallow, if you know what I mean. So it's a little weird to dial in sideways here. I'm gonna do my best. So the way the UI works is you have this sort of linear chain here with all of your different effects built into it. And you can move these blocks around, but they're set blocks, kind of similar to what you see in like lower price point amp modeling units. And then it splits and you have two signal chains here. So if you want to run dual amps, you can do that. The nice thing about having these pre-assigned blocks like this is to my knowledge, this does not run out of any DSP. So you won't have any DSP limitations, but it sort of does limit you creatively as compared to something like the HX stomp where you can just throw a block in and you can assign that block to whatever effect or parameter you want. So something to keep in mind. Let's just go straight for the amp here. I am going to turn off the, uh, I had a boost on that. I'm gonna turn that boost off for now. And this is the amp. You can see the type is a Bogner Ubershaw, but let's go over some of these different amp types here. Let's start with the, um, the boss ones. Here's transparent. <laughs> Clean amp, not my thing, but you know, if you like that, cool. Uh, natural. Pretty cool, there's a lot of low end in that one there. Okay, we have a boutique. This is the Supreme amp. Okay, it's a little bit honky to me, I guess. I don't know how else to describe that, but uh, not my amp of choice there. Probably dial that in a little bit, but I just want to get through these amps here. Next up is a Maximum. <laughs> I like that one. That's a cool amp. Okay, next we have the Juggernaut, and this is supposedly like a 5150 style amp. We're 
going to come back to that one. I like that one. Shouldn't be a surprise. Crunch. <laughs> Um, that one's okay. X high gain. X modded. I like that one a lot. That is Boss's take on a modded Marshall amplifier. And um, yeah, I think it's a really good tone. It's like a Fender Twin. Tweed. Diamond. Start going through these a little bit quicker here. British stack. Pretty cool Marshall style tone. Then we have rectifier stack. So here's like your Mesa Boogie Dual rectifier. Man, that really captured the essence of like the low end that you get from a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. It's pretty apparent. Mean. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, matchless. Pretty not my tone, but you know, if you like that, cool. Bogner combo, this is probably like an ecstasy type combo amplifier, something like that. Orange stack. Yeah, it definitely has some of that British rock vibe to it. And then the Uber Shawl, which we heard earlier. X-Drive BS. Concert. So there are a decent amount of amplifiers there. And the selling point for the GT1000 line of products is this AIRD technology that they're using to model the amplifiers. And the idea behind the AIRD technology is that they're actually modeling the whole signal chain. So they're modeling like not only the amplifier itself, but actually how it's reacting with a matched speaker. So when you buy one of the GT1000 products and you load up an amplifier, it is automatically paired with a speaker, which supposedly was in the chain when they captured or, you know, sampled or however you want to refer to that. When they algorithmically enslaved that amplifier, if you want to refer to it that way. When they sampled it, they sampled the whole signal chain. And the idea behind that is when you pair a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier with a Mesa Boogie recto cabinet, you get a different response on the amp. Like there's this constant push and pull dynamic between, you know, the sound that you're hearing out of the speaker and the way that's interacting with the amplifier. And the intended end result is coming up with an emulation that feels more realistic. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. I think what's interesting about using the GT1000 as compared to something like the Axe FX or you know, something like Quad Cortex or even the cheaper modelers in its range, maybe like the HX Stomp or something like that, is it sounds like there is a lot more information in like the low end and the low mids and stuff like that, which is definitely appealing. But in terms of feel and the way that it's interacting with the speaker, I don't know. It's really hard for me to say, and you know that I've said this a hundred times, I think the idea of like feel is so subjective and it's just so hard to pinpoint and really take a good objective analytical approach to it. So I don't talk about it too much. So is it more similar to a real amp than something like the HX Stomp? I don't know. 
Sort of? <laughs> I don't really know how to answer that question. We'll have to shoot them out in the future, which by the way, let me know what you would like to see this in a chug battle against. We could shoot it out against the Ampero Stomp or the HX Stomp, or it's really up to you guys and what you want to see. So let me know down in the comments. All right, so let's pick an amp and do some effects here. Uh, I think I want to go with this Recto. If I'm being honest, if I can find it. Dude, that has all of the low end I would expect from a rectifier, and it's responding the same way in the low end that I would expect from a rectifier. It just sounds really, really full and natural. And just like a rectifier, it needs to be dialed in quite a bit and boosted. So let's just go ahead and throw the boost on this guy. Dial in this amp here a little bit. So let's go into amp here. Kill this gain a little bit. We have sag and resonance controls, which is nice. I like that. I'm gonna boost that resonance a little bit. And then we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna turn this bass down. And you know what? Those are actually kind of where I want them. Turn that presence up a little bit. It sounds brutal. Okay, so in the signal chain here, we have a wah. We have a compressor. Maybe like we want to do a lead tone here. We can choose a compressor. We have a few different types of compressor here. X bass, stereo, orange, D comp, X comp, boss comp. Let's use the boss comp. <laughs> Moving on here, we have an EQ, then we have a modulation. Uh, this is effects three blocks, so let's see what different effects we have in here. Let's check out the octave here, uh, and we're gonna go poly octave. Let's do the octave level at 60 and the direct level at 100. And those are all the options that we have in this guy. So the pitch shifting is awesome in the GT1000, as you would probably expect when Boss makes a product, their effects are probably gonna be top notch. Any type of effect you can think of here, really. And I think they have the delays and the reverbs separated out into different blocks. So let's uh, let's put a phaser on here. Like if I was gonna build a solo chain or something, I'd probably put a phaser in. Let's go with a script phaser with a very low rate, really high depth. <laughs> Sound pretty good so far. Let's keep moving on here. So like you can see, we got a bunch of different effects blocks here. You have a block that's specifically dedicated to courses, your separate noise gates for your two signal chains there. And you can do dual amps with this. I haven't really experimented with that enough to demonstrate it, but maybe we'll do that in the formal review. And at the end of each one of these amp signal chains here, you do have a parametric EQ, another EQ, another effects block, a volume block if you hook up an external expression pedal. Delay, that's what we want here. Now there is no delay type, which is interesting. It's just delay, huh? Maybe like do a high cut and see if we can get like a lo-fi type delay. Pretty cool, even though we can't select the delay type, uh, it's neat that we have that high cut built into it. Here we have another delay block, same thing going on there, and yet another delay block, same thing going on there. So you could probably sculpt these together to get some like creative delay tones, but it doesn't look like there's any like baked in delay types in the unit, which is a little weird. What are you gonna do? And yet another delay. Uh, then we have a specific, a flanger block, a master delay block, your looper, a reverb block, only one reverb block. 
And then all these at the end are sort of like mixing signal routing sort of paths. It's kind of weird you only have one reverb block. Okay, these are the different reverb types. We have hall, hall one, hall two, plate, room one, room two, ambience, spring, shimmer, dual, terra echo? I wonder what terra echo is. <laughs> Ah, uh, pretty cool reverb, but let's go. You could do dual mode and you could have two different types of reverbs blended together. That's kind of neat. Uh, let's try this shimmer reverb here. Oh, uh, there's one more I wanted to try here this ambience reverb. Um, let's turn the density up on it, like, a lot. All right, there's one last thing I want to do here real quick, and that is plug in a seven-string guitar. I can't remember who asked me, but someone asked me about dialing in a seven-string tone with this guy. Um, and I would say that if I was going to do that, my guess would be I would probably just go with what I know works with seven strings and see if that applies here. And that is that 5150 style amp. Now, when you change amplifiers, all of your settings stay the same. So you might have to go in and redial it, especially on something like this. We're going to want to kick up that resonance. <laughs> Viciously brutal. I mean, I'm perfectly happy with this guitar tone, to be honest with you. Also, big shout out to Royce from Deviant Guitars for taking my Agile and uh, shaving down the neck and making it playable. He took it down enough to where it's really comfortable to play now. Yeah, this thing sounds absolutely excellent, specifically through a solid state power amplifier and a cabinet. I will go more into the built-in speaker emulation and some issues that I had with it in the review, which by the way, let me know what you guys would like to see covered in that review. I always take your guys' input into consideration when I'm making those videos, and it's really, really helpful if I know specifically things that you would like covered in that video. So definitely let me know down in the comments below. All right, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna assume you liked this video, so make sure to hit the like button to let the YouTube gods know that you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.